Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, we're gonna make this sort of funny abstract shape with mesh op. So again, it's mesh op practice. If you're trying to learn mesh operations in Moto and do some procedural modeling, this, I just was messing around and ultimately came up with something that looks like a crab legs made out of pretzels. So I'm calling this pretzel crab. So anyway, um, but yeah, it's kind of a cool shape. I also used um, Dex particles to scatter some particles on there and used uh, uh, Quad Remesh as well, which is another plugin for Quad Topo. Uh, you can kind of see here, I've got a couple of weight maps built. You can see the whole mesh here, the sort of floppy thing. Oh, I also use soft body dynamics to sort of flop it down on the plate at the end of the day, but we're really just going to make this shape. And we can use these uh, V maps here for um, shading as well. Okay, so yeah, why don't we just get started? I'm going to press uh, Control N to make a new scene. And we'll just get started from scratch here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just, you know, create some empty mesh items over here. Call the first one uh, circle and then press in for another one. We'll call this one rings. These will be the rings we extrude the circle on. And another one, uh, we'll call this one shape. This will be our main shape. Okay, so for a circle, we're just gonna create a, a cylinder. And if you ever see like that black, it's just Moto's advanced viewport compiling shaders. I, they're, I know they're working on getting it fixed, but it's there for a couple seconds. It's kind of like a game stutter where they compile shaders on the fly. So that's what that black is, if you're wondering. Um, go to zero, we'll just do that. In fact, we're gonna take the sides um, down to eight. Just, so just go to channel hall and go down to eight. Looks good. We'll keep this pretty low poly at the beginning. And that's our circle for our rings. I'm going to add a circle primitive. So just circle with Bezier is fine. We'll keep a Bezier, size is fine. And I'm going to add a radial array. Now you don't see anything happening because we need it offset. So come over here and we're going to just turn the center, just move it up on X a little bit. In fact, I'm just gonna swipe with my left mouse there to put that on channel hall. Channel hall, like dragging is just the best thing for experimenting, right? Better than typing in values again and again, better than tool handles, just dragging. So something like this, and we're gonna randomize this up a bit. So we're gonna add a jitter on top of that one. And actually, you know, for radial array, I'm gonna go um, and maybe do maybe do 10, a count of 10 there. And I'm also gonna click replace source. I'm not sure you need to do that. That just replaces the um, original circle with a clone, but I, I actually don't think you need to do that. So for jitter, you know, normally you think of jitter, if I turn on channel hall again, that I'm just jittering these points like this, but you can actually uh, do it um, in a rigid fashion. So I just press rigid translate, make sure you're in polygon mode here, and I'm gonna uh, toggle my verts off, and then I jitter, and I'm just moving around these circles, right? So I wanna make sure I'm not in Y, so turn off that. In fact, I can just uh, select these two channels and sort of get them to move around, something like this. What we want to do is avoid really tight little areas like this. Like we don't want a whole bunch of crisscross like that. We just want some sort of general overlap. And so something like this is fine. I'm going to add another jitter. We're going to be messing around with this just a little bit until we get a, a shape we like. This time I'm going to say rigid scale and do the same thing as in polygon mode. And so I'm just going to adjust the scale a little bit, something like this. And both of these, I'm going to middle mouse drag uh, to the right swipe and to put the seed on the middle mouse with both spacing and sizing. So now I can just drag with the middle mouse and get different um, jitter positions until I find something I like. I want a little, this is actually pretty good. I want a little bit of overlap on all of them. You can also do the same thing with um, the seed here. Just give, give different seeds on find something I like. This one's not bad. That's a little too close for my... Oh, this one's really good. So everything's just sort of... Yeah, this one's really good. So again, you don't want things to be... You don't want little tiny gaps. You want pretty big overlaps. So this one will look... I think will work out well. Okay. So now we have... Uh, yeah, now we have our rings. So let's go over to our shape. And we can hide our rings. And we're going to add a curved sweep here. Curve sweep is a pretty flexible node, actually. We can pick our path mesh. We'll just pick our existing and pick our um, rings here for our path and then our shape mesh. 
over here on the properties, you want to make sure extrude shape is set to linked shape and not current mesh. And our linked shape is going to be our um, circle. There we go. Of course, we've got to make some adjustments. That's not quite what we want. So let's uh, keep adjusting. We're going to flip them like so. And then instead of using the current size, the, you know, the full one meter of our default uh, cylinder, click that off and maybe go to 0.1. We want them pretty thin, maybe even 0.05 to begin with. Um, and then we will make them, you know, thicker later on. And then you can just press C for channel hall and right mouse is just going to, you know, add more segments there. Right mouse is always more, more clones, more bevel segments, more extrusion segments, more whatever. So that's looking pretty good. And we'll just, yeah, I think we'll just go with that. I don't think there's anything else we need here on uh, curve sweep. And I am going to add another mesh op here. Uh, just a vertex merge and it's going to um, merge the invertices so it all looks like they're closed uh, circles but there's actually um, vertices are doubled up on the end points and so uh, on the extrude and so we're just you know closing that shape up you just keep it to one that's fine i think we're good there and then yeah so we're going to move on and what we need to do um we're going to push these out so if i had a push here and just uh, push out. They're all pushing out the same. What we want to do is push them out to different m amounts. And so this technique, which I've used a number of different times, is we're going to be giving a different weight map to each of these polygon islands, right? And that's going to allow us to use that weight map as a fall off and then push these out to different amounts. So it's a really great technique for variation among polygon islands. So here's how you do it. You do a set weight map, okay? And you put that underneath the push. We want this weight map to be created first. And we just call that weight map W1. Hit enter. Select map is fine. You can see it um, selected over here. There it is all at 100%. And I'm going to pop open my schematic. I'm going to drag down my set weight. You can see that uh, the geometry right there, shape is right there. In our tool pipe, we're going to add a fall off operator. Okay, so a fall off operator allows us to make our own fall offs, which is really cool. And you can make your own fall offs based on different channels in the fall off operator. So we have all these channels here like point index and point part and point edge count and polygon area and polygon flatness. So you can make a, your own fall off based on a polygon's area. So you know, lots of area, lots of fall off, little area, no fall off, stuff like that. We're going to use polygon part. Now, in this case, a part is referring to a, a, a polygon island. I kind of wish they'd just change it to the, say polygon island. That seems to be more of a accepted term. Also, we have the you know parts as a a selection uh, set as well. We have selection sets, we have material selection set, and we have part se selection sets. So it's a little confusing. But the polygon part here is referring to um, you know islands like this, right? Connected polygons. So I'm going to right click in polygon part, say separate channel, move it over here. That is just a moto convention. So we can, you know, these are still, I select them. You can see they're both selected. It's still the same item. It's just I'm moving the channel over here. And in between, I'm going to add a random node. Now, there's a lot of random stuff like, you know, selection, you know, random nodes in here and random, um, uh, you know, physics nodes. What I want is a channel modifier random right there. Now, mine looks like a dice because I have Warren's uh, content, uh, icon content kit on Gumroad. It's just a couple bucks. Go buy it. I say it every time. And it helps. And you can drag it on here. What's cool is it even has a little dice icon right there in the node. Isn't that cute? Okay. So um, here's what we're going to do. On our random node, we want to make sure that use time as seed is unchecked. You want to uncheck that or it will not work. Fall off operator, you want the, um, I'm sorry, the set weight. You want to make sure it's on polygon like that, not vertice. We want a polygon. And I'm going to plug in my fall off operator polygon part channel into, whoops, before I do that, I need to actually grab the channel, the seed channel. You can just drag it right here from the properties or if you want to from um, the channel list there. We'll drag it in here. And again, we uncheck use time as seed because we're going to use polygon part as seed. Right? Each of these parts has an index and that will be our seed. And that output will go into weight. And now, looky there, we have different weights for each of these different um, polygon islands. So it's pretty cool. And some of these are pretty similar, right? These are all kind of the same. I want a little more, I don't really like how this landed, 
but I don't have a lot of control over what I can do here. I guess I can remap, do a, poly, a remap uh, vertex map node, but instead of doing that, I'm going to use another node. And this one is actually kind of fun because I discovered it today. If I could do this, I didn't know you could do this. Randomize ID. So this is, again, your icon is going to look different if you don't have the Warren kit, but there it is, randomize ID. And what this will let us do is uh, do a little more work with our randomness. So our output of our random channel operator is going to go into the input here and then the output of this is going to go into weight you're going to see this changed a little bit and so what a random id allows us to do is we can use this key value to sort of re-randomize it i'm just going to write uh, swipe on there so i can drag and you can see it's all changing now so i just want to find something for different values this is this is pretty good actually are all sort of spread apart so we have some really light ones and some really dark ones um that's not bad. Just want to find something, you know, something like this where you don't have too many that are exactly the same right next to each other. So I think, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to keep that. Also, there's other values here. You can do scales. So you can, you know, multiply them. You can do a minimum, maximum. So you can just sort of remap these random weights, both re-randomize them and also adjust their scale or min-max value. Uh, clamping with this node. So randomize ID, which I never, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't think I ever used it before, but hey, it's useful for this, right? So awesome. Okay, so we've got our um, weight map there. So now in our push, we just need a weight map fall off. So get a weight map fall off. And we're going to point that to W1 and then C for channel hall. And now when we, whoops, not strength, we want push C for channel hall. And you're going to see these going up now. So the really dark red ones are going to go the most and every, uh, the lightest ones are going to go the least. And so we have some variety. This is sort of getting a little, little crunchy in here. We don't want little tiny gaps. We want the gaps to be a little bit big, a little bit bigger. But that's okay, I think. I think we're good. I think even that's good maybe we'll do that so it's not just totally overlapping it eh, something like that so looking good okay so now they're all just sort of um now they're still different polygon islands and so what we need to do is we need to do a couple things here i'm going to add a boolean so we'll do a boolean operation and we don't have a driver surface we don't need one we're going to boolean it into itself with union all and this is going to smush it all up into one um big thing here, right? And I do believe that makes us lose our, our, our V map. If you undo that, you can see it, but if you turn it back on, we lose it. That's no problem. We're going to transfer that back on there later on. And this is where, you know, you see these types of things done in Houdini and they've got a really nice volumetric system in Houdini where you can create a volume out of this procedurally and then uh, sort of remesh the volume and it gets rid of all those little interior polygons, intersections. I would love a volume mesh up in the stack. Now you can do it in Moto with a volume item, the BDB item, and I can show you how to do that uh, maybe, but it, it'd be so much more useful to have it in the stack as long as a, as well as a retopologizing uh, mesh operation, like an auto retopo in the stack. That would be awesome. But we don't have that, and we're going to end up dividing this thing up into a couple of different meshes here. So, okay, so we're about done with this guy, except for one more. We need an edge is to curve. Edges to curves mesh operation. And right now it's turning every edge into a curve. We don't want that. We just want to use the edges around the Boolean um, intersection. So we'll do an add uh, selection operation and we want to use a select by previous operation which is a very powerful selection operation that allows us to select a previous item we'll select boolean and a um, channel from that item or some uh, modeling history from that item intersecting edges so right now we're just creating edges from curves um, from those intersecting edges we don't want a polyline we want a spline curve and if I push in here, you can kind of see them. In fact, if I click this delete geometry button, you can see them all there, right? Those are the curves we're creating around those intersections. So I don't want to delete the geometry. What we're going to do is press in in the item list. We're going to create some new items here. So this first one we'll call shape curves. We're going to merge in some curves there. A new one will then be called, um, let's call it shape maybe final. Okay, so for shape curves, add a merge mesh. And we're going to merge in our shape. 
So go to existing, go to shape. Now our shape is merged in there. If I hide everything else, we've got our shape. And then over here in our merge mesh options, I just want to merge the curves in. So I'm going to uncheck faces. And there we've got just our curves, right? Pretty cool. And then I'm going to rebuild those curves just to clean them up a little bit. So curve rebuild. And I think you can leave it at 20. That's fine. Let me just go to the wireframe. You can see these at 20, right? Versus before, it was kind of a little bit crunchier, just sort of haphazard. Now they're nice and even. And then I'm actually going to smooth them out just a little bit. And so put on smooth. You can channel haul on right mouse, smooth these out a little bit. So you know, there's our original ones, and there's our nice smooth ones. So looking, looking pretty nice. We've got some nice curves in there now. And then I am going to go to my shape final. I can hide the shape curves. And I'm going to do another merge meshes. And I'm going to merge in our original shape again, right? And there we go. And this time we can actually do the opposite. We don't actually want the curves. So we could just um, turn, we just don't want the curves. We just want the polygons. And I'm going to do kind of what I did earlier. I'm going to create a weight map based on the curve location. So we're going to do a set map. This is again, just a, a, a or set vertex, right? A set vertex map. What is it? Oh, set weight. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> weight. Um, we're going to do a set weight. And set weight is going to, what's we'll called W2. Hit enter. Don't worry about your guys disappearing here. Just turn, turn on a. Actually, it seems weird that they would disappear. Let me go to item mode. Oh, it's hidden. That's why it's disappearing. Make sure your eyeball is on if you're in item mode. Uh, so set weight, we'll call it W2, and you can select the map again. It just gives it a value of 100%. But we're going to actually um, adjust that value based on those curves. And we're going to do that with a curve fall off. So tool pipe, curve fall off, enter. Now, this could slow down a little bit, um, which is fine. But we don't have too many polygons in here, too many points. So our curve is going to be that shape curve. You'll be happy to know that in a future version of Boto coming out soon, it will not keep your previous search uh, queries in the search field, so you don't have to clear them every damn time you want to add something. Thank you, Foundry, for doing that bug fix. Okay, shape curves. So click that, and it may uh, think for a bit because it's doing some calculations on these curves and defining weight maps based on uh, this fall off around the curve. So I'm just going to let this think for a second. And depending on how many sort of rings you have in there is, is how long it's going to take. Okay, well, not too bad. I didn't even have to pause the video. So we have to do some changes here, though. We don't, right now it's doing the length of the curve. You can kind of see it around here where it's going the length around uh, each of these curves. So starting at one, you know, the start of the curve is 100% and the end of the curve is 0%. We don't want that. In fact, we want to do quite a few changes here. Um, so around the, the length of the curve, we actually want it to be 100% on, on both. So I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to undo this. I'm going to drag this up so I get more interactivity. Well, actually, I could have just done um, deferred here. Uh, I'll do that. So let me turn on weight maps again. And again, I'm just trying to make this a little bit faster. So when I turn this back on, it's going to look a little bit different because I changed... Um, instead of doing the weight map all the way you know, around the length of the curve, we're going to be doing it as a function of the distance um, from the curve's location. So as soon as this pops back into existence, there we go. So now it's 100%. But I think, let me just turn on deferred here. See if this lets me adjust this and then um, uh, calculate some mouse up. So for fall off by distance, 500 is fine for now, but we want to make sure... This first part is zero. So you want that down to zero and let your moto recalculate. And I don't think this is necessarily a moto being slow. I think this is doing some fairly serious calculation here. We've got a lot of curves on here from every single intersection and it needs to calculate um, a weight map fall off based on the distance from those curves. Okay, so there we have it. It's just inverted. I should have uh, drugged this part down, but I'm just going to do it real quick by hitting invert there. And it's going to flip those around, and then I'm going to uh, maybe adjust the radius just a little bit. 
Okay, so this is kind of what we want. We want the weights to be around these intersections, all right? I think I'm actually gonna leave the radius at 0.5. And now what, what I, bleh. Now what I wanna do is add another um, push operation here. So let's uh, add a weight map fall off. Again, make sure you select new, not the existing one. Again, in, in the next version of Moto, I believe they're gonna flip these so the new ones are on top and not the existing ones. Again, uh, a good call there. <laughs> Make Moto easier to use. Because oftentimes I just click existing uh, on accident because it's the first thing that pops up in the list. So this is a second weight map fall off we're putting on here and we're gonna select the W2 weight there. And then for push, I think we'll try maybe a 0.05. Yeah, there we go. And so you can see that sort of tapering look there, right? So you get some polygon errors, but that's okay. We're not gonna, not really errors. We're just going to live with that for now. Get some flipped polygons in there, but that's fine. So 0 0.05, maybe just a little bit less, the channel hall. Something like that. And then I'm gonna sort of finish this off by doing a uh, subdivide and a smooth operation. So we're gonna subdivide this guy, the Catmull Clark subdivide. So it's looking a little smoother and then we can add a smooth operation on top of that as well. And maybe about 20 iterations or so on the smooth. We could do more than that, 40 or so if you want. And uh, okay, looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is this is basically done. Um, but it is not our final piece. Like I said before, I wish we had either a volume mesh operation or a retopology operation in the stack. We don't. So what we're gonna do is we're going to right click this guy, say du uh, freeze uh, mesh operations. We're gonna duplicate and freeze. So it's duplicating this guy and freezing it. And then we're gonna retopo that duplicate. Okay, there we go. Here's the shape final. And I'm going to retopologize this guy using the quad remesher. So under my kits here, I've got quad remesher. Again, there's a good uh, Pixel Fondue um, tutorial on quad remesher. It's a really powerful uh, uh, plugin for Moto. The, let's see how many polys are on this guy. Uh, 56,000. So yeah, let's maybe try to keep it at uh, 15,000, let's say, for the quad uh, remesher here. And I think we just leave everything else fine. Hit remesh. All right, now that it's remeshed, I'm just gonna smooth it out some more. I'll just use the regular Moto Smooth. Shift S, whoops, go to polygon mode. Shift S, and yeah, set it to 1,000 maybe. Hit OK. We could just smooth it out a couple of times. Looking pretty, pretty good there. Maybe do it again. All right, so now we've got this sort of weird looking shape, but it doesn't have any vertex maps. So let's add those back on with the transfer VMAP function. So here's our VMAP right here, right? So this one has it, and here's our retopo shape here that does not have them. And so we'll just call this uh, shape final frozen. Sorry, I just can't help myself. That one's frozen. And retopo shape, uh, we'll just call this um, shape final frozen retopo. Okay, so we have uh, shape final frozen. We've got that W2 selected. And then shape final retopo, we want to add a new map. We'll just call this uh, weight. And then I'm going to just offset this guy a little bit. I'm just gonna move him up just like a little bit there. And I'm going to come up here to vertex map. I'm gonna say transfer. It's gonna transfer from the other visible map and that's where we're gonna use the W2 map there. And we're going to use local and raycast, hit okay. And now if I hide that guy, we've got this map here on our retopoed one. And we can use that for shading. And in fact, we can even bring up our, our initial shape that we did um, way back here with uh, this vertex map on it. Whoops, not that one, the sh not the shape file, this one, where we um, 
get up to boolean so we can just turn off the top couple there and get those those various randomized maps back and again i'm just going to transfer those back to this uh, retopoed one so we'll just again we're going to create a new map here we'll call this weight two and again, it defaults to 100%, but we're going to write over that with um, this guy's, right? So this guy's right here. We're going to overwrite it with those. So I'm just isolating these shapes here. Uh, okay, so again, texture, whoops, vertex map, transfer, and we're going to use um, W1 from the original one. And it's going to put it on, whoops, I'm going to make sure weight two is selected here. And again, do this one more time. I think you have to have it selected. So W1 is going to go to weight 2. Hit OK. And you'll see that change. Now I could hide that original shape there. And uh, there we go. It's a little bit, whoops, weight 2. Whoops. Let me delete that one there. Weight 2, 2. Just weight 2. And we can use that in shading, right? So you can use that as a assistant in shading to give different colors to each of these rings, and as well as to place, um, for instance, uh, uh, replicas at these wave map falloffs here. So I can do something like this: go over here to add item, and add my uh, dex uh, service distribution, and I'm going to add a replicator. And I'm going to add a unit sphere. Just hold shift, get a sphere in there. We can hide it, that's fine. We're going to set all this stuff up in the schematic. Right now what I'm getting is uh, these little no nodules here. That's what we're doing. And so I can use the weight map to place those with decks. So I'm just going to push up my schematic, bring in my replicator. I'm going to bring in my sphere. I'm going to bring in my retopoed shape. I'm going to bring in both decks items. And we can hide this and hide this and sort of push in here so dex is going to have the retopoed shape in its surface mesh that's what we're projecting onto and the sphere is the prototype and the dex is the particle system right I'll just sort of make this a little bit nicer there now you can see dex always goes to a sort of preview mode first we're going to turn that into raycast and pack and i'm going to turn on locators so i can move this ray projection up and make it bigger. So we're going over everything there. We're just looking at it from the top. Make it kind of go over everything. And then I'm going to change some of the sizes. I can hide those again there and go over to my service distribution and change the minimax size, maybe 0.03 and 0.01. And uh, maybe 2000 and up the uh, multiplier to like six. So it's kind of dense on there. And then I'm going to select this W2 weight map, actually W1, the, the first weight map. And I'm going to turn my uh, weight map blend to 1. And now we just kind of have it on those um, uh, uh, cross sections there. And I can actually, and I'm just going to adjust my weight map a little bit just as sort of as a whole to pull it back. So I'm just going to select this guy, have that vertex map selected. Make sure I'm in vertice mode. I'm just going to select my uh, weight tool. Just weights. I'm just going to drag backwards a little bit just to pull that weight map back a little, just to kind of get it on those intersection parts like so, like that. And there we go. And again, you can use that. I could have duplicated the weight map and, and then adjusted it and used a new weight map. You can have unlimited weight maps. You can kind of see where I'm getting with this. And then you can use those weight maps to blend between different uh, materials as well, which is what I did this uh, in, in Octane, as a matter of fact. I used that weight map to blend between these white materials and these sort of red materials. And I used that second weight map to get different, like some oranges and some different reds and different colors on the different rings, some purplish on the smaller ones with zero weight or near zero weight and some darker reds on the bigger ones with a lot of weight. So yeah, I think that's about it on this one. Um, hopefully you find it useful. The last thing I did is I think I just turned this whole thing into a soft body and flopped it down on a plate and sort of came to rest. And you can uh, do that. And maybe I'll do another tutorial with texturing if you guys are interested in how to get that sort of 
um, look in Octane Render or in Moto using weight maps to blend between materials. So, okay, that's it. Yum, yum.